does anyone have uh, any uh, questions that you've that you've come with? Um, doesn't have to be sort of like uh, sort of concrete or specific. It could just be an area you'd like to inquire into into more. Yeah. Okay, got Liam uh, and then Mary. Um, well, I guess I just start. You know, it sounds like it strikes me that some of the the fundamentals of the support um, seem like they 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 could be the basis of perhaps some exercises that could be added to a a normal to a to a typical Kabat Zinn course that would kind of help help people to contemplate their interconnectedness that so that we can provide is is more and more intellectual support for uh interconnectedness but um part of the contemplative traditions that mindfulness comes from is of course uh seeing seeing our interconnectedness more more directly uh so i just wondered if you had any any thoughts on <laughs> how, how how this might stimulate some some exercises that would allow people to to uh, you know see their their interconnectedness in a in a in a, the deepest possible way as perhaps part of a you mean you mean for instance like the curriculum that you and I have been trying to trying to interest <laughs> yeah. in that the last <laughs> perhaps <you know. laughs> Yeah, so, so Liam, could you introduce yourself? It'd be helpful, I think, particularly as we're, we're a small group, it might be nice if we um, uh, just say who we are and... and uh... Yeah, so I'm, my name is Liam Kavanagh. I am a co-founder and research director for Life Itself, which is a, a community for a wiser world. I also help to um, sort of co-organize the this science retreats at Plum Village, so dialogues between uh, Plum Village and scientists about social change and the interconnections between contemplative traditions and science, and particularly as they relate to like, um, how can those two work together to reduce human suffering? Uh, so we're, mm -hmm. we're going to have a, a retreat with say David Sun Wilson, who's a, um, studying pro-sociality soon. Uh, and I work on kind of ideology, I'd say applied ideology. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually David Sloan Wilson who sort of inspired the introduction to the emotional intelligence chapter that we wrote, sort of challenging the selfish gene sort of par paradigm. And mm -hmm. uh, he works on dual inheritance theory, looking looking at how you know we've inherited our, our culture as well as our, our genetics. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think um, uh, there are a number of there are a number of groups working on exactly that. And, the, you know, the case study that we have in that, in that document um, uh, from Awareness, when they're working with sort of European climate leaders, I think they, you know, they, they call them, is, is one such approach. You know, you and I, we've been talking about a kind of more philosophical, perhaps abstract, uh, uh, abstract's not the right word, but you know we had our own sort of way of um, thinking how we might intervene here. But there is a there's a number of different approaches. There's an adaptation, a direct adaptation of MBSR in in the pipeline, um, and that's uh, so Christine Ramsler is working on that. Um, you know, it, it sort of helping to develop the, curri the curriculum with other sort of mindfulness teachers. I mean, Christine's working on pretty much everything. <laughs> uh, and, and, and she's also helping to, um, to do the evidence behind the awareness course with the European Commission and European Parliament. Um, and that is, an, so, so one's an, an evolution of MBSR. The awareness one is an evolution of their program, which is much more workplace focused using a kind of hybrid online, offline platform um, uh, inspired by their work with sort of major international corporates. Um, there is, uh, there's, there's, the, the, there's the other program, uh, that the case study that we mentioned at the, at the end of the, um, the box we, we wrote on the work that reconnects and Joanna Macy's work. So that's a kind of a more mindfulness, explicitly mindfulness based work that reconnects intervention called active change, I think something like that. Um, 
and uh, may a thousand flowers bloom to extent. I think like I was asked on a podcast last night, like what, what, what do I hope to see in the next couple of years? And I mean, you know, a two year time frame is pretty ambitious for anything. But I think this innovation and research and like properly funded research is, is the thing. Um, so the, 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 where we where you and I were coming to it um, was 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 looking into connectivity and sort of Buddhist concepts of emptiness and um, talking to those appealing to those people who were, who who would be appealed by who, who would find the word philosophically appealing you know like just mm. the fundamental ideas underpinning this stuff. That's not what the awareness audience is. They have you know, busy senior leaders who just want to, you know, be, able, be, be feeling that they're responding more sophisticated in a sophisticated way. Um, and, and Christine's course is like, it's a mindfulness course primarily. It's mindfulness based. So it's primarily about creating mindfulness skills. Mm -hmm. Psychoeducation component, rather than being about depression, is about, is about the climate. Um, so I think these are all different horses for different courses. You see what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Interbeing is another, you know, is mm. a, a, a more obviously related to, to connection term, right? Mm. Which is just Thich Nhat Hanh's way of phrasing emptiness, actually. It's essentially the same, same, same concept coming from a different angle. Mm. And, and that, you know, makes me think one, one thing I did uh, is potentially in our sort of three year plan for what we're doing after this um, report to, to continue the work um, is to uh, is to look at developing a toolkit to help innovators um, with the evidence base or to like maybe maybe to facilitate dialogue, you know. Cool. All right. Thanks, uh, Mary. I think it would be nice if you, if anyone wants to sort of come back to some of these threads and offer your own thoughts and stuff, we can make it more of a dialogue than just question by question. But Mary, could I over to you? Yeah, thanks. I was pretty much similar to what Liam Liam asked. Um, because so I'm I'm from Mindful Nation Ireland, and I'm also a mindfulness teacher, and I'm a budding my uh, climate activist, and I feel really motivated now to um, deliver climate change slash mindfulness courses so it's really it's really encouraging to hear that there's a lot going on I kind of have this feeling of like just give it to us <laughs> um but also um, yeah I think maybe for now my my motivation and a lot of people I know who are working sustainability are actually becoming a bit burnt out mm -hmm. so that's another focus I think you know something more immediate that we can start to do is to, to support climate activists mm -hmm. to sustain themselves yeah so it's just more comment now and, and on that, actually, there are a number of organizations who, who are, have been doing that for a time, and some of them have been using mindfulness as their thing, uh, one of their main modalities. Um, so there's stuff, there's stuff to learn from from them. And, and you know, like, like we did at the back of the agency document that we published a couple of years ago, we were hoping to do some kind of table of programs or like further reading and links. Um, but we didn't have time to put it into this this draft, and we'll probably like put it on our website and link to it, so it could be a live updated thing. Um, so I could give that to, I can give that the relevant resource to to you now, Mary, if you are wanting to yeah, stick home with it. Like, um, <clears throat> and so um, so yeah, there are two or three that are particularly about climate activists because it's been a you know it's been known for a while that this is a really tough thing to to work in cons consistently. So, um, I, I think it's more mindfulness informed, as in they're bringing mindfulness bits into what they do, rather than it being a, a mindfulness course, if you see what I mean, but still, yeah. it's there in their thinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. Stephen, and then um, over to Atera. Stephen, uh, have you got a question? Sorry, who, who, who are you oh, talking to? Stephen, you. you. Oh, to me. Oh, me. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I've got a couple of observations and, and a question right. as well. I mean, the, mm. I, I, I kind of started working with Greenpeace in the, in the sort of late 90s and, and became um, aware that something was missing um, around about 
in the early 2000s and um, started looking around for um, organizational applications and technologies and things that that might might be that might be useful and um, so I'm just really glad to see this arrive really um, and and I was uh, I, I really like the idea of um, of this being a moment to sponsor a um, a sort of global innovation program in developing mm -hmm. inner technologies to, to match the the, the kind of uh, exoteric obsession with with innovation and so I, I was quite intrigued to hear mm. I think John Kabat-Zinn was talking about you know any I don't say any weapon that comes to hand it, it's the wrong kind of frame but let you know that there are many many different um approaches and techniques and and mindfulness MBSR based things is just one is just one of them and um I'm now working in the, in a fintech climate startup in in Canary Wharf, and so I I was I spent a long time looking for things that extroverted people could could do and that could, I could integrate into into the kind of working practices. And I, I tried a lot of different things: social dreaming and mindfulness and, and Tavistock style interventions, and, and they didn't really work. Um, and I stumbled across um, sociodrama and psychodrama, which are mm. um, much more put, putting kind of in, in the inner world into outer space and then into in, into into the three dimensional world, social space, and then interacting with it. And um, so I, I created something called Mindful Money in 2010, which was a newspaper that had conflict resolution protocols and mindfulness built into it. And Unfortunately, it was reasonably successful in the mindfulness and the money party company. Um, and the, the current thing is actually now really starting to work. And I would, I'm, I'm interested in kind of, the reason I sent you the invite to come and talk is that um, the finance industry is, pl is, is playing quite a key role in the transition or will do. Mm. Um, but obviously the mindsets in the finance industry are, are somewhat removed from the kind of aspirations of, 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 of kind of mindfulness practice. So um, the company was positioned from the beginning as, as responding to the technical dimensions and the, the adaptive dimension, which is the inner dimension of things. And um, so I've been able to use your report to show to the CEO to say, look, this is, this wasn't a mistake. This mm. is, this is kind of happening. Mm. And um so I'm I'm kind of very interested to I'm, I read something Christine Wamsler said about sustainability organisations will need to integrate um, personal development mindfully into everything they do all the way from not just workshops here and there but right through into project management communications tools everything and I think that's 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 very interesting and um, that that's uh, I, so. I think the I'm re very interested in the organizational applications and um, mm. we've got a program running now called boost which is a spontaneity training program it's much more kind of like Zen than, than anything else uh, and it's social it's um, there's an individual and there's a group dimension of it and um, where uh, we're going to be um, putting it out via social media and podcasts and everything and we've got partners linked up with us as well so um, it would be great to keep in contact um, mm. about this uh, because philosophically it, it's totally aligned, mm. um, but it's a completely it's a different set of of um, it's mindfulness in action, and um, yeah, well, but it's great just great to see it, and and um, I, I I it it has it has to happen now. I mean mm. the, the organizational side it seems to me. That has to happen, really. Mm. But anyway, there you go. Mm, that's really helpful. Well, thank you for your input to our research in the first place. And, and uh, mm. yeah, looking forward to ways in which you can input into the next phase, which is the, you know, the promotion mm. and articulation of, of, of the implications. Oh. Um, but, yeah, but the, the short answer is yes, I'd love to, 
um, I'd love to come and uh, and speak, and I'll be in touch as, as soon as I'm able to. Okay, yeah, that would be great. Thanks. It's been, it's been mad. Um, so, Ruth, can you help me out with these? Yeah, Jamie, you've got various hands going up, so I'm going to suggest that you take two questions at a time, and I've hopefully captured people in the order their hands have gone up. So, if we could go to Grattan and then Marion in that order, please, and if you could ask your questions and then and then take your hands down, and then I'll. I'll come to Karen. Or we'll make comments, you know, or give us feedback. Yeah, questions or comments either. Yeah, um, so Grattan Donnelly uh, from Mindful Nation Ireland. I'm also a, uh, a coach and all the work that I do is largely out in nature, walk and talk coaching. And so the connection with, I think there's so much through that connection between nature, mindfulness, resilience and so on and so thank you for bringing all the different strands together in the paper Jamie it's a, I think it's a it's a great work and I guess some of the comments or questions I have is is um, the link is there is it worth exploring the link between um, coaching as well because coaches very often work on the inner dimensions maybe you're already doing that and I like the you know the question that Liam was asking you know What's what else are, are are we bringing into different programs and interventions? Because I think I think there is a space now for more um, focus to bring some of this work into organisations in different ways. And and for me, the biggest learning I, I'm doing a, a program courageous coaching uh, with the groups of coaches at the moment and the biggest learning that's coming out of that for me is the power of actually people connecting with nature so when they're out doing walk and talk coaching just that connection is so powerful mm. and so I just yeah you know, well I mean first of all um, the nature connection section I think well we, we recognize that <clears throat> the ways in which we want to strengthen it for the final version um and, and one of them is is sort of probably one major case study about mindfulness and nature connection and and some other perhaps one, one or two examples we can thread through in the text so so if you have any sort of sense from your work Grattan, that you could you could help us to 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 to, to uh yeah make that section better then please please let us know first of all um second uh i don't know whether you if you come across tom rivet karnak uh, yeah. And and Joe, uh, have you seen his conversation with his coach Joe Confino? Fabulous conversation. Okay, great. Um, uh, yeah, I, I really like like that. And um, speaking to well, there's, there's there are two frames of reference to, to respond to respond to your question. You know, one one is the value in coaching that Katie White. Uh, our chair of trustees, the executive director at WWF, who chaired the, the launch event, gets from coaching is, is, is enormous. So pe people who are working day in, day in, day in, day out in that space, having, uh, having sort of joined up coaching that's mindfulness informed and in the dimension of sustainability informed would be absolutely enormously valuable. And the, I joined the awareness course with the, sort of the European leaders and uh, the community element that they got out of the program was, was, was an enormous support to them, but they, they, they still found that they're kind of going against the stream of the prevailing culture, because sustainability culture, particularly uh, as it seemed to be well, dysfunctional or not, not, not doing anything, is, is, a, is a real cost to them, you know. Uh, and so I haven't got um, much more than to say than, than, than yeah, yeah I, I really think it's an important part of the, part of the puzzle. Um, I'd love to include that more in what we say, if you can suggest ways of doing that. I'll see what I can do, Jamie. <laughs> Did that, I mean, was there a question there that I didn't answer or was it? Uh, was that, um, okay. No, um, but, but I, I think it's, maybe it's just worth exploring deeper the coaching profession where mm. lots of coaches are doing this inner dimensional work mm -hmm. and how i mean i guess there's a question there is like how do we get to them with this work how do we a a how do we make it 
more relevant to what they're doing in, in small ways, like I've just suggested. And what are the networks that we can go out to to communicate this? Yeah, yeah. well, there's the Climate Coaching Alliance. I don't know if you've come across them. And yeah, the I think that they, they, yeah, they are they, who they, hosted the conversation with, with, with uh, yeah. Tom and Joe. I think. They, they also asked if they could mention our report last week, Grattan, and um, there was a coaching in the Great Awakening six day global festival that I think this report got brought into. So we have been in touch with them about that. So great. Hopefully yeah. it's, it's way and, in. I'll, I'll, I'll send a few contact details to you, Jamie, of people I think that might be useful to be in connection with. Fab, thank you so much. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, have I, have I, I just answered Grattan's question without going to. Sorry, Ruth. No, that's fine. It's fine. Um, Marion, Marion, next though, who's very patiently been holding her hand up for a while. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I so believe in this, the content of this document, that I want it to land as many places as possible. So mine is simply an observation. Um, background briefly is that. I've been a long term supporter of the mindfulness initiative. Occasional volunteer yeah. and have through that have followed the development of mindfulness over the last however many years. So I read the document. Well, that's not strictly true. I read some of it in detail and skimmed the rest. And I tried to put myself in the position of the person or the group of people for whom it's intended. Now, in the launch, policymakers were. Uh, mentioned as the intended reader up front. Um, so I tried to imagine what a policymaker was and put myself in their shoes. Um, so as always, um, my points are to do with the construction of the document and making sure it lands because there's so much good stuff in here. And I, there, what I came to is very some, some very simple suggestions. Um, perhaps what to do with the, the introduction. Um, can I mention them now so I don't get buried in the 2000 emails that Jenny <laughs> yeah, put? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is brief, Marion, yes. It is, it is very brief. It. It is three points. Okay. Yeah. Um, you've got a great paragraph at the end of the introduction about who this is aimed for. Mm. It, if, if you focus on one and perhaps a whole group of people who you might be. That would be good at the beginning, right at the beginning. So when I pick up this document, I know who's the intended reader. I think the recommendations, which are excellent in whatever the last page was, 57, if they could be summarized somewhere in the introduction because they're excellent and have, they're really clear where this might go. Um, and probably the third thing, which I know you've got in mind anyway, this very much appeal, appeared to me as a repository of such great information, which needed to be, and I think you've said this, Jamie, to be pulled out and directed more specifically to different audiences. That, that's it. Mm. Yeah, thank you. I think, yeah, I mean, particularly, particularly that comment about foreshadowing the recommendations much earlier. Yeah. Because a couple Literally, of people yeah. said, like, I got to the end of the document, and I was so happy to see the recommendations there. They're yes. Were, they're so much more <laughs> tangible and and exactly. solid, but it was a sort of a pleasant surprise at the end. So, yeah. So yeah, that's, exactly. a, that's a really good point. And, and just a bit more focused on who's it for at the beginning. You could pull yeah. up that paragraph. Yeah. That's it. Um, great. Thank you so much, Maria. Over to you, Ruth. Great. So uh, we've got Karen next. And could I suggest maybe that, Karen, you give your question or observation followed by Sarah. But if you jump in, Jamie. Feel if, if that feels appropriate, I won't tell you off. <laughs> so Karen first, please. Hi. Um, hi, Jamie. Um, perhaps not a surprise that it's a question about health. Um, so I trained in pharmacy um, and I've been teaching mindfulness for a long time now and set up mindful medicine. So really interested in bringing the two together and mindfulness into health and how much mindfulness um, can help with health because of reconnecting with ourselves. Um, I think I know the answer to my questions is about how we increase understanding and it's about dissemination and accessibility, um, which is why I approached uh, colleagues. I'm a trustee with the Institute for Health Promotion and Education 
and I felt like it'd be helpful to have some fresh eyes in terms of accessibility because I've been in this field for some time and I hope that you find that helpful um, and language did come up from several trustees in terms of not everyone being able to connect with the terms agency and inner and outer uh, connections so some clarity around uh, definitions and linking back to the document perhaps um, but I think yeah for me it's about education and outreach and how we can reach as far as we can and help people understand these links between climate and health you know just seeing around neighborhoods of mm -hmm. gardens being replaced by tarmac because you can just see this loss of connection to inner and outer all, all around us so i think that's an education issue in many areas and we flagged up at um, pshe in schools and, and reaching diverse uh, populations and, and probably also a um, greater call for research into looking at um you know health interventions and health promotion um so i've been doing work looking at alcohol um, and, and how powerful it is when people can really connect to how they feel and function when they don't drink alcohol and, and how that really influences people's consum consumption compared to fear-based uh, messages. Um, so it's, it's more of the same for me, um, but I'm really excited and inspired by the document um, and stuff about trauma and difficulty and, you know, a, a lot of roots of problems we're dealing with is because we, we don't, a lot of people don't have the skills to manage difficulty and, and trauma. So I was really pleased to see that in there as well. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Karen. Sarah. Sure. Okay. Um, so just as a quick introduction, my name is Sarah Taggart and I am uh, currently the director of the Wisdom Lab at a small international NGO called Global Grassroots. Um, and uh, I met Jamie through another conversational group called, uh, that's working on similar issues. And I just um, I just want to thank you for the clarity of this report. It's one of the cleanest, easiest to read, and very compelling pieces that I've found. Um, I've been working with Global Grassroots for almost ten years, and we really have sort of an on the ground, I'd say, innovative experiment going on in East Africa. Um, we use a curriculum that's self-created by our founder and it integrates mind, body, spirit with um, social innovation and social enterprise. And we train women in grassroots uh, communities in groups, in teams to build a sense of connection. Um, we support them to identify the, the visions and dreams they have for their communities. And then we use a, a program called my um, mind, sorry, breath, body, mind, BBM, um, to support their own trauma healing. All of the women are in environments where they've experienced war and genocide and others, other traumatic events. Um, and then we we have coaches actually uh, that are especially trained to be able to support the women to both apply those mind, body skills but also to, um, to design and implement their own social innovations within their own communities. So it really is the whole arc Steve, that Stephen was talking about. And we really need help. Um, we've had such a hard time explaining this model to funders and to policymakers to help them understand why it's more expensive, um, why it mm -hmm. takes 18 months instead of you know one year to deliver on the external deliverables of a new water system because we're taking the time to do breath, body, mind with the groups as we go or because we're following their lead in many ways and doing this from a more um, inner driven perspective. Um, we've also really need help with the evaluation side because as we become more and more comprehensive and integrative, it means that there are a million different inputs and outputs and outcomes that we could be looking at. And as a small NGO, we need we need help from folks like yourselves to determine, you know, what are the most important things that we should be looking at as long as we're we're doing that um, with deep input from the women in the communities themselves. So doing it in a participatory collaborative way, which, as you probably know, is more time consuming and can be more expensive. Um, so on the one hand, I'm incredibly excited and grateful to be part of these types of conversations. 
And I guess I would just say it's an invitation that if anybody's interested in partnering, collaborating, giving us um, some greater insight into what's happening around the world that we could learn from, I would love to connect with you and also to you know support any of your inquiries into what those models and examples might be that are truly happening in you know very um, sort of unexpected places, rural communities, communities of color, places where these these sort of innovations are already underway, and it's a time of great. I think we're about to see an explosion of those. And it, it's wonderful to have a forum like this to talk about the importance of, um, of how we can keep that, that sort of generative approach um, while also honoring the need for quote unquote evidence-based um, mm. interventions and work. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and you know, uh, Sarah didn't mention the actual program we're, we're, we're both involved in, but it's it's really encouraging that it's happening. And that's the, the UN Development Programs um, Conscious Food Systems Alliance. Um, and so Sarah and I were just before this call actually were on a, on a meeting together, helping to draft a theory of change um, for how inner development basically translates to outer development in global food systems. Um, and there's also going to be a manifesto, and it's very much aligned with the document we've got here. And because, well, Christine Ranzler and I um, are part of the team as well, but then other people are thinking in very similar ways. So, so it, you know, in, as, as well as what we're producing here, there's going to be a UNDP, you know, sort of endorsed and distributed um, report of, of sort of a, a report, a theory, a theory of change document, which could be an interesting reference for, for, for people as well. Um, but Sarah, can I just, can you remind me whether the, the grassroots, global grassroots program you, you have, uh, and, the, and the one that you mentioned, particularly in, in relation to trauma, does, does that have sort of like sustainability or holistic attitudes, et cetera, as an outcome or? Um... So um, the, the trauma healing curriculum that we use is called Breath, Body, Mind, and that was developed by two, um, uh, I believe it's a psychiatrist and another MD at Columbia University. So it was, it, be, it came from the, um, the, the world of trauma healing. Um, it's been applied in many, many different settings around the globe. Uh, so it doesn't specifically have a climate change and sustainability lens. But um, but I think as someone earlier made the point that a lot of what we we are struggling with is that folks don't have the the um, uh, the reserve internal reserve after experiencing deep trauma to necessarily um, engage in the kind of collaborative work that we need or to engage in other types of activities whether it's um, in our case you know, women creating their own water ventures, which is very much connected to creating a, a healthier climate. Around. So mm -hmm. um, it does, Breath, Body, Mind, though, does have a very specific component of creating connectivity. So to the earlier comment and conversation about adding some concrete activities to something like a, a MSBR, uh, MBSR, sorry, um, they actually in that curriculum do that. So you go from doing a bit of body and movement work to doing um, a round of 10 or so minutes of coherent breathing to doing a connective activity with somebody in the room um, to unpack a question related both to the practice and to the world around you. Mm -hmm. um, so that I, I guess is a long way of saying no, but the application <laughs> could be used in many, many different settings. I'm with you. I'm with you. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I think it, I think it's going to be, um, I think it'd be good something good, good to add it to our table of programs. Um, and there might be some kind of well, there normally is to what we do a field building benefit. Um, and, and, a, and a potential to connect with connect with others, and maybe we could look at. Um, uh you know supporting that more in some way 
um, and you may in sorry in speaking with them directly you you may learn of of places that they're doing that with folks that are working on the climate crisis so they mm -hmm. may have some concrete examples that would be good case studies okay. yeah good good point thank you um and karen christine ramsler's model of inner and outer sustainability which she's got in an academic paper includes health as one of the mediating factors and so there's a way in which definitely i think we can probably at least in a sentence maybe or uh, in, in, include that somewhere we've put the whole diagram in the response with the ihpa okay. they really like that oh great <laughs> i've already asked her for permission to use it Okay, good. <laughs> well, I'll, you know, I'll come back to you more on that on email. But sure, yeah. yeah. Um, back to you, Ruth. Thank you. Great. Um, so we'll go to Jenny next, if that's okay. And then Atera. Apologies if I'm not pronouncing names right to anybody. Um, so Jenny first. Are you on mute, Jenny? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes my headset mutes me. I have to <laughs> unmute myself twice. <laughs> I'm, uh, hello to people I already know. Nice to see Mary again. It's been a while. <laughs> um, I'm Jenny and I'm the health advisor to the Mindfulness Initiative. And thank you for your email, Karen. Um, I'm also chair um, People's Health Trust, which is focused on um, the health inequities in communities of place and um, identity and represent faculty of public health on um, government uh, committees that are dealing with mental health. Um, I think this is this work is really critically important and critically important for where we are now. So sort of congratulations to Jamie and Christine on recognizing that and bringing it together that um, things, uh, thinking is coming in from different areas, seeking to connect across the piece. And I, I've been recently re reading some of this huge, weighty two tomes by Ian Mc McGilchrist mm -hmm. called, uh, I've person. called it up, The Matter with Things, okay. uh, Our Brains, Our Delusions and the Unmaking of the World, which um, it took him 10 years to write and probably would take about a year to read fully but being me I, I did read the final chapter first <laughs> which he said <laughs> you've got to go back and read the rest of it but his essential um, analysis which comes fr from a great deal of understanding about how human beings work and our brains work and the difference between the attention that we could give to things in different hemispheres is that the right hemisphere is being um, disempowered by the, the left, which should be its um, servant and enable us to do things that serve the greater purpose. And as a result, we're, we're becoming very rapidly disconnected in our cultures from um, nature, from other people and from the divine or the sense of awe, um, however we choose to define it. Um, and the urgency of the situation that we find ourselves in as a result. And so the, um, the, the changes that we can make, I think particularly to practice coming back to Liam's first point um, and make available really widely, not just to people who might sign up for a full mindfulness course, but to people who are working, planting trees and cleaning rivers and talking to their counsellors and um, working in schools and working in the communities that are experiencing, um, are being disconnected um, sort of involuntarily from nature and people and um, any sense of power or things beyond the everyday urgency. I think that's for me would be a real um, important next step from here that I've worked a little bit with um, people who've um, lived in care for most of their lives and just um, their 
the, the huge impact of doing things like listening to running water and thinking about the leaves in the forest that are making the sounds that they hear is a real reconnection that has big impact for them. Um, I think we need to get this, um, that the practical um, resources that can help people along this path uh, as widely spread as we can and fairly soon. I don't want to take that Charles Eisenstein's been doing this as well and saying that the um, climate campaigners are shouldn't be focusing on the urgency and the destruction that it makes people mm. turn away and um, mm. we should be focusing on the the love and beauty of nature nevertheless mm. the science is telling us how urgent it is you know we've probably eight years um so i'd i'd welcome as soon as we can get something that can be shared and I think the Mindfulness Initiative and others are in a really good position to curate that, make it available online, mm. um, make it available freely, and in um, taking up the point about language in understandable language, um, different lengths. People have got different attention spans because our attention's being stolen as well. Mm. Um, that would be brilliant. So when you say curate, Jenny, do you mean the different ways in which we can reconnect different sort of programs? Yes, and, and, and um, individual exercises, um, everything. I was thinking of the work that was done around um, the epidemic. It had to be done quite quickly and it had a mm. whole mixture of things in it um, mm. and something similar for um, you know, the emergency that we have at the moment while not rushing. <laughs> mm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Atara, thank you so much for patiently waiting with your hand up. Not at all. This is great. So good to be here. Um, thank you for hosting and thank you for holding the follow-up call. And thank you for the report and the launch that you guys did. Um, I, I was on the call and it was absolutely amazing. Um, I have not admittedly had a chance to read through the whole document. I've skimmed it, but I'm, um, I'm a long time practitioner. I, was, um, I don't know, Jamie, how closely you've worked with Emergence Foundation. I know they funded the, the draft report. So I, I was basically part of the spiritual community that those guys were involved with for like 20 odd years. So I was like, oh, that's so good to see. Mm, um, I'm glad. And um, I, I'm actually based in the US at the moment, um, and I'm working at the intersection of integrative medicine and planetary health. So it's just a new position I've started. It's based out of Brigham Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. So I'm kind of like so pleased to see this report come out. And it was, um, I heard about it through In Vivo Planetary Health, who I, I think mm. did a really nice job kind of putting it out there and encouraging everybody to, to listen to the launch. Great. And um, I think also following on from, I think, Stephen's comment in the chat, um, I was curious about where you are in terms of, because you've got the report out, you've launched it and what your next stage is. And I think you're wanting to get the word out more. And um, like he was offering to, to you know, host you on a, if you're going to do a roadshow or something. Um, I'm planning on doing like a podcast at the interface of integrated medicine and planetary health. And I think it'd be fantastic if you wanted to come on that at some point as well and get the word out over there. Um, I have a number of different questions. So there's, there's that. And then in terms of the research that you're pointing to, what, what kind of research do you feel? A number of people have mentioned that um, needs to happen now. And I also appreciate mm. what Jenny just said in terms of the time scale. I, I'm kind of nervous about getting involved with research programs given the time scale that we're working with in terms of impact so and at the same time you need to have research for credibility so i'm just kind of curious about what kind of research do you think is really helpful to pursue as a next step and which i, I may be in a position to kind of like you know open some kind of uh, conversations around that in, mm. at, at harvard medical school so that was another question uh, what would you recommend in terms of research at this interface? Mm -hmm. And um, so last question is this, this particular group just being here is so good because it's so rich with everybody's experience. 
Mm. And I'm wondering, do you have like, because you're like a nexus at this point, you must be connected to so many organizations, initiatives and individuals that, you know, can move this forward. Do you have like a convening space or is there any kind of um, plan to have like a convening space of all of these people that you're working with? Because the um, the exponential factor of ha bringing all these people together is obviously mm. amazing. I know that would probably require funding, but mm. just curious because just hearing some of the different things people are doing, the positions people are in, that will obviously help move things further, you know, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, the energy that this is sort of generating um, reminds me of the report that we released in 2015, which was the first public policy report about mindfulness. Um, and that, you know, drew a lot of people out of the woodwork and, and became a real sort of flashpoint for field building and the, and the field becoming aware of itself. And it, and it feels like the inner dimension of sustainability has been bubbling away in academia to some extent. There have been some innovators here and there, Joanna Macy's been doing a thing for a couple of decades, but yet yeah, it hasn't got to that point where everyone's just suddenly like, okay, no, there's a field and we can see ourselves. Um, I, we, we, we would love to do something like that. Liam uh, is working on a mapping project um, and it's not so much just on the inner dimension of sustainability. It's, it, there's a lot of overlap. Um, but we've been having conversations on and off about about the science and 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 the, and the, the practice of, of mapping. Um, it feels like that's going to happen anyway, having launched this document, um, and we should make use of that energy, and we should we should we should you know find ways to to be that lightning rod mm. um, and pull people out of the woodwork, and then. Liam and colleagues can perhaps actually put them into a, a map and visualize it for us, you know, but we could do the work of actually, you know, um, getting the lists of people uh, who, are, who are interested. And uh, Liam might want to make the tools to, to you know, like I say, visualize that. Um, so that's really good reminder. Thank you so much. And um, if funding is, funding is the question because all this takes resource, right? Um, so uh, it'll be little unsure at how to do that answers in a postcard. Um, but on, on the question of um, research, yeah, it's it's like our policy work has tended to be as sober as we can be, or you know, because feeling that that's that's going to be taken most seriously. And in the case of say depression research that Jenny and I have worked on. You know that you have the individual, you have the pilots, and then you have the RCTs, and then you have the meta-analyses of the RCTs, and then you need three meta-analyses of RCTs in order for the you know the the, the national um, board of clinical excellence to approve something for national. You know, and this takes like fifteen years exactly. to get to that 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 point of research. By the time NICE have done their thing, um, they are trying to speed it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are trying to speed it up even within depression. But yeah, you're absolutely right. We haven't got 15 years. So we've got to get from pilot stage, which is where we are now, to scale within, within years, not decades. Um, and, and, and that requires, yeah, a, a, a wartime footing approach to, to, to funding and, and, and research speed and innovation speed, if, if this is recognized as the important missing piece that it should be. Um, and so, in the, in the way that Sarah was saying, um, like she's had to drop off, but you know, she's like, do you have any researchers for us? Like, uh, you know, um, and, and uh, I was surprised by actually how early the evidence base is. Thanks, Stephen, really good to see you. Um, how early it is the research, the evidence base is for the work that reconnects model, which has been around for quite a long time, but yeah, actually, you know, so, What's needed is to move up the evidence hierarchy. That's all I can say. Like it, we, we need we need active controls, um, active controls, yeah, um, and 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 serious re serious research is seriously funded. So again, like if you were able to contribute even a little bit to that, that would be a big deal. All right, should we, should we um, go over to Claudia for our last yeah. thing, Ruth? Is that all right? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Hello. 
I think I dropped here in by, not by accident, because I wanted to be here, but I hear that you all know each other and that you have been working with each other and, um, <laughs> and discussing the, the, the document. And uh, I was just listening in because this is my area of, uh, of, of work as well. And um, so now so many was said and I have actually comments to everyone, but like to what the latest what you are saying, Jamie. And by the way, I know you because I saw you once at Wisdom 2.0. Mm. Last year, I think okay. you gave a presentation. And so that's why, and then I thought, that's really great. And Wisdom 2.0, I know from Inner MBA because uh, so I'm, so, so it's the full circle and now I'm suddenly here. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, and it, uh, uh, so I'm founder of Sustained Impact and volu I volunteer as a climate reality leader as well. And so actually, um, so the inner work is so crucial and so important. And while you are talking of more research, I would like to put in the point, we need no more research. We need to take it into, into, into life now. So yeah. there has been so much research on mindfulness and consciousness and what meditation does, et cetera, et cetera. And so rather than more research, is really to bring it into the business, into the schools, into every into everything. And so, uh, I, I just listening to you. So one concrete idea is um, so I would like to um, uh, how do you say present to climate reality, uh, so to say your concept, mm -hmm. and maybe that would be a concrete thing um, to maybe organize a. a, a a presentation or something if this would be of interest to you because climate I don't know if you know climate reality is climate reality project which was founded by uh, vice president Gore uh -huh, and right, okay. we climate reality leaders are all over the world and mm -hmm. uh, so so everywhere and actually just out of today we came out of a, a climate justice training and the subject was also that we raised and I also uh, added it to that it was that in order to, 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 to work for towards climate justice and everything climate, in addition to all the technicalities that we need, greenhouse gas and renewables, et cetera, et cetera, which is absolutely key. At the same time, we will also have to work on the human part. Mm -hmm. And the human part is exactly what you are touching upon. Mm -hmm. So this is an absolute uh, co correlation. And so this would be one thing that if you're interested, I really would like to, um, to bring this together because I think that would be very good also for, for the rest of the climate reality leaders to learn, to learn about, about this. And, and in particular also, of course, in my work um, that I present and, 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 and bring that in, et cetera. Well, thank you so much for that offer, Claudia. That sounds that sounds really valuable and, uh, and a great network to to, to 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 share these ideas amongst. So, yeah, mm -hmm. please, yeah. I'm, I'm well, anyone who wants to get in touch with me directly, although my mm -hmm. inbox is currently <laughs> literally over two thousand, so maybe email the info email email address as well, so that Ruth gets it. Um, but, but yeah, please please do get in touch and uh, and let's work something out. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It looks like we're kind of coming to a time, a time there, but that's, that's great. But just on the evidence, I agree with you. It's sort of a yes and. Like, the time requires us to get moving. There's enough evidence to ask for us, for us to, to have the confidence to, to try stuff, throw stuff on the wall and see what sticks. And we need to be all open to falsification. And, you know, as we mentioned in our report, some of the evidence shows that shifts in sustainability behaviors don't occur in trainings that last less than a year or rather when you haven't had a practice for less when you've had a practice for less than a year so potentially that's just showing us that five minutes a day isn't going to cut it you know and and it needs to be a proper program yeah <laughs> can i say that something to this uh, to what you are saying is okay, that well, I mean, this is the end of the session we were going to have go ahead Claudia. Oh. if anyone needs to rush at this point then absolutely fine and uh, lovely to see you I, I just wanted to say that 
Uh, not necessarily. So I a little bit disagree out of practice. So when mm -hmm. doing strategy work in sustainability, for example, to make it an integral part of the journey. Mm -hmm. And then it's really about already working with it in action and mm -hmm. having people experience it. And mm -hmm. once they connect and work on vision and, and all of these kind of things, though this is the walking, the they're baking it in and this is happening you know all the time so to say so mm -hmm. if so this is where you can take it directly into action and and have and integrate it in all of this um design for collaboration and facilitation and so this is uh so that's why so sorry yeah. about that but I, a, I just had to point. jump in <laughs> great point yeah lovely thank you i'm glad you clarified um good i think we've probably got call it there unless there's any any real burning contributions now that okay great lovely to see you all thank you so much everybody for joining us thank you thank you thank, thank you, you very much for that. well done with everything thanks <laughs>